G'day guys, next up I've got Justin Marks from the Visual Studio team. He's going to walk us through the entire ALM life cycle and that's got a lot better in the 2012 release and it includes now operations. Check it out. I'd like to you know, draw this out on paper so people understand the entire life cycle from beginning to end. So can you uh, sure. take us through this? I'm happy to. So this is the nice big continuous feedback loop. So we're just gonna go with the old fashioned circle we have and there's really three phases I like to look at this. So I'm gonna kind of draw some dotted lines to, to show that. The first phase is the definition phase or define. So that's when we're talking to the stakeholders and we're asking what do they want. Exactly. And they usually explain it wrong. So <laughs> I, I do some sketches yep. and um, once I've done the sketches, they all they wanna do is start coding. Exactly. And uh, So yeah, one of the key things we said there is understanding what the customers want, not so what they're asking for, and the best way of doing that we find is with pictures. Pictures speak a thousand words, we speak in pictures, or it's much easier to comprehend things for pictures. So for our definition, the, the defining of requirements, one of the things we really like, excuse my handwriting, is our PowerPoint storyboarding. Right, and the typical person that will get good at this will be a, a business analyst exactly. type thing. Business analyst, designers. What do they have to have installed on their machine? PowerPoint. That's it. PowerPoint and the power tool so they can actually right. package it up at the end of the day and put their name and the author field, things like that. But it's, right. just, it's just PowerPoint. You're not going to be asking people to go into Photoshop and adding things. We're not going to be asking people to go into TFS and do additional work. At the end of the day, the whole concept of PowerPoint storyboarding is it's easy enough for a business analyst to use as part of their day-to-day -day process. So can I just uh, confirm that? Mm -hmm. If I've just installed Office with mm -hmm. PowerPoint, mm -hmm. do I, I don't get the storyboarding no, stuff. No, that's true. Yes, you do need to have the business, sorry. Yeah, you're correct. Um, we will be having the appropriate SKU for the business analyst, which right. is the test professional skill. Right. Um, that includes the PowerPoint storyboarding. And Obviously, if what you know, does that install? Like so, a lot of stuff. Yep. The, well, not that much stuff. We're, it's not like a Visual Studio that's got everything in yeah. the sun. Um, but the test professional SKU has three main pieces of value. One is the PowerPoint storyboarding for okay. business analysts. Yep. The second is the test manager set of features. So that okay. includes the, for testers as well as the business analysts. So they're kind of like a, a BA and a tester, which I guess is a good idea. Yes. Exactly. Mm. And the, it, depending on the organization, right. yes. a lot of them share yep. that role. And then the third piece is the feedback scenario, which we can talk about a little bit. So okay. Right. And then the third key piece there is exploratory testing. And along the lines of what you were talking about in Dev 10, we delivered a really good suite of testing tools, the Microsoft right. Test Manager. The, one of the pieces of feedback we got is that's a little heavyweight for some teams. You have to spend a lot of time building test plans and test cases. Why don't you let me just go in and test the product without having the structure of you must test step A, B, C in this order? I think the reality is most um, you know disciplined teams uh, have gone through these lessons and they've started doing this, but but a lot of development is done by just agile teams, and some agile teams don't don't uh, do anything beyond user stories. Yeah, and that's, that's true. Mm, and um, so they just want someone to just start testing yep. without defining yep. exactly yeah, what to click. Exploratory testing gets you a lot of the way there. Mm. I mean, you still need to install the tool set, namely the, the test professional SKU to get this, and you need to create a test plan, but you are able to just start testing. You go into to Microsoft Test Manager, just click Explore, and up pops this rich tool that will allow you to use whatever applications you want and will collect very rich data, and by that I mean you can get screenshots, you can get video, you can also get IntelliTrace files of, of whatever application is being tested, and even those action recordings that get you back to your coded UI test. So right. it's a nice nice way to bridge the gap between a traditional tester having manual test yes. cases and a developer building those automated. So at the end of the day, we've done a whole bunch of development here, we've used all of the rich tools um, to do that, Yes. Um, and now we're ready to kind of throw that over the wall because it's some sort of a shippable unit. To a wider audience, to is that what you're saying? Audience. Okay. But generally, we, traditionally what we do is like, great, we've done sprint, 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 yes. shippable, let's put send it off to our operations teams, and we have the last copper, last segment of operations. But it's, it's a much better idea to get that feedback early. At the end of sprint one, yes. I have some deliverable goods there. I really yeah. want to go to my marketing, my sales, my vice presidents and stakeholders and get their feedback too. That's an incredibly right. important part. So right in that, the hinge of operations and development, you want to be able to get stakeholder feedback. Feedback from stakeholders. Okay. 
And what this is, is another set of new features that we've um, enabled for a full end-to-end -end scenario between the business analysts and the stakeholders. Where again, stakeholders are people outside of your team. So they're not traditionally using TFS. So they don't know, understand even what the concept of bugs are. Yep. They're thinking of much higher level. They don't want to know what's on your backlog. They want to think of, hey, what's changed? Where do I need to direct my attention? So with the feedback scenario, the business analysts can send a simple request to their stakeholder, which gets delivered through email. Mm -hmm that will be tracked in TFS at the back end, but you as the stakeholder now get this email with a very easy link which says, hey, here's the button to click to launch your feedback session. And when you click that, assuming the tool's installed, it will just launch this feedback tool which allows you to give rich bugs from a stakeholder as well as from an internal team member. And that email will also have the install link as well. So if you are in an organization that doesn't have it installed already, it wasn't deployed out through SMS or something, you have it right there in the email one click you need to do to install it and the one click that you need to launch the tool. Right. So at that point, we've gotten some feedback from our stakeholders, we're shipping, we're using continuous deployment and things to get this to Azure, whatever our release mechanism is. And now the operations team really takes a, a first class role in understanding and analyzing the data. And we have two solutions there as well. The first is preemptive analytics. And Preemptive Analytics is actually a partner company, Preemptive, out of Cleveland, Ohio, and you might be familiar yes. with them from the Dotfuscator yes. product. But they've actually extended their technology now to move into the analytics space. And the concept here is it's kind of like Watts in a box, Watson being the technology we use internally at Microsoft. The idea here is you can instrument your application before you deploy it to collect exceptions. And any time an exception occurs, you want that information to go out to some hosted endpoint, whether it be cloud-based or your own internal organization, and then at the end of the day have that incident actually appear in TFS as a rich inf piece of information. So I have a phone application, I'm yeah. deploying that phone application, you've used that. Today, if that application crashes for you, I'm completely blind. I don't that's have right. any idea yes. that anything went wrong. And you're probably going to start bad-mouthing me on Twitter if, that's, yeah. if I know you well enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we really like is that developer to see that exception, not just know that it happened, but also see the full stack of where right. it happened so they can actually take some action on it. Right. And that's exactly what Preemptive gives us. You get the exception instrumentation in your application before yes. deployment, and then you also have the tie-in back to TFS where not only does it create those work items, but it also will aggregate it. So if 10 people are using my app and right. they all have crashes, mm -hmm. I get one work item with 10 instances, with 10 counts, as opposed to 10 raw work items that I have to, as a developer, figure out, are these the same problem? <laughs> well, I, I love it. I'm very impressed. Uh, I haven't dug into the operations side, so I found that really insightful. Cool. But uh, I'm, I'm just very happy we've got exploratory testing. <laughs> and, you know, I think uh, anything that helps getting iTrace files is great. <laughs> and uh, I just, well, I already love TFS Preview. And uh, the storyboarding thing is just... Um, I can't believe I like it more than Balsamic, so I, I'm <laughs> well, just shocked. I love hearing that. I want yeah. to get every single person using this okay. to say that. So. All right. Well, it's been great uh, talking to you and getting this bit of an overview. Uh, I can't wait to uh, try it out. Cheers. Before you go, I've got a task for you. Go to tv.ssw.com and subscribe to our newsletter. You'll be informed of all upcoming videos. In addition, if you're super keen, I'm all about inspecting and adapting. So send me an email or send me a tweet. Ask Adam Kogan. Cheers.